So to continue looking at our top story today, we're joined by the Foster's Chief Executive Officer, John Pelez. John Pelez, good morning. Good morning. good morning. So what finally got you and the board across the line? Look, I think ultimately, you know, 63 and a quarter cents uh, increase on their offer price of 490 was what got us over the line. That, that 63 and a quarter is, is made up of the, the $5.10 cash per share, 30 cents cash per share, and then the 13.25 uh, cash per share uh, in, in relation to the final dividends. That's right, yes. Yeah. All right. Are you confident shareholders will accept the board's recommendation to accept this offer? Look, we've had a very, you know, very close look at it, obviously, and um, been thinking about this for quite some time, and we think it's a very compelling offer for shareholders, and certainly the, the directors will be voting their shares in favour. Do you anticipate having to have any conversations with the federal government in terms of national interest and in a foreign takeover? Look, no, I don't expect that. I think that, you know, ultimately this is a great deal for the company and, frankly, a great deal for the staff and our customers. You know, it's a terrific company. What can this global giant, SAB Miller, do to Foster's uh, improve its brand sales, improve, improve market share that you and your colleagues haven't been able to do over the last couple of years? Yeah, look, I think the last 18 months has been a, a huge period of time for the company. We've, you know, having demerged, having separated the companies and really put the business back on track again. And I think the, the opportunity that comes with this is it just opens up, um, you know, opportunity for great international support, certainly opens up the career opportunities for Australians, um, you know, through this. And generally, I think, means now we've got the backing of a company that is solely focused on beer. There's some analysis around today that suggested the, um, the, the separating of the two businesses, the wine division and the beer division, set the company up, or at least the beer part of the company, up for exactly this kind of takeover. Was that in your mind at the time? Look, it, th that was always a possibility, but that wasn't the intention behind it. I think that you know, what's been proven is you know, a significant increase in shareholder value as a, as a result of the separation. I think our, um, the value of this deal is something like 24 25% ahead of the value on the day we demerged. So I think we've, what we've demonstrated is the demergers created value, but the, the intention was always around maximising the value for shareholders. Can I just follow up with that, just to cast your mind back, because of course it predates you. In your view, was the venture by Fosters to go into wine, was that a mistake? Look, these things you know, can often go down different paths. I think you know, a great idea, well executed or poorly executed. In, in my view, this was probably one of those areas where at the time it was made for all the right reasons and then a number of global circumstances went against the company and ultimately the execution let it down. But it's really been a textbook case into how not to run, to run a brewing and wine company over the last decade. Well, my view, I'm an old-fashioned um, FMCG guy and I believe you focus in your core business and the core business of this company has been beer and, and really I, I see lots of opportunity in that a lot without of, going anywhere else. A lot of Australian drinkers, uh, a lot of our viewers are very concerned this morning about Australian icons, more Australian icons going offshore. What do you say to them? Well, I think the, the, the wonderful thing about this, this deal is it means that our brands have a bigger opportunity offshore. And frankly, our people have a bigger opportunity offshore. You know, the, um, the, the opportunity for, for the business, I think, just opens up now. Um, this will always be an incredibly important part of Australia and will continue to be so. And what about onshore though? As you know, you've been losing market share. Can SAB Miller stem that decline and grow sales of brands like VB in Australia? Well, fortunately, in the last 18 months, we've stabilised the business, so the market share decline is a thing of the past for us. That was about poor execution. We've got the execution right. Look, I think that what comes with SAB Miller, again, is the knowing that we've got the backing of the second, second largest brewer in the, in the world, the commitment to continue to invest in this great business in Australia. I, I just want to return you to your observation about this opens um, the company up to the world now, uh, career opportunities and also the, the brands themselves. We've heard this before. We, of course, heard this from most famously from John Elliott when he said he wanted to fosterise the world. <laughs> Why is it different now? Look, I think that... Um well, remembering he did fosterise the world, <laughs> and all the problems came after. I think that um, the brands are very strong brands. They haven't been given the opportunity in recent years, and the, the work we've done in the last um, few months has shown that you know, a number of countries around the world want to see these brands uh, expanded. So that's the opportunity. Is, is it just impossible now for a major brewer to, to be a standalone, um, single country-owned brewer? I mean, the consolidation and amalgamation in the industry for the last few years has been substantial. It just seems that it is now all coming down to a couple of key 
groups. Is, is that just the way it is now? Look, I think consolidation is a feature of most industries around the world and, and the alcohol industry has been consolidating now for at least 25 yeah. years and there's still some way to go. Um, it is possible to, to operate independently, but I think to have the kind of scale that you need to expand internationally and with the pressure of equity markets, it certainly helps to be part of a larger group. And that's what you were missing, you felt? I think that, um, no, in, in many respects, I think what comes with this is simply a very good offer for shareholders. You know, ultimately, at the end of the day, a compelling offer and, and our job was to maximise the value for them. Will the Foster's head office stay in Australia? The, there, the nice thing about this deal is that they don't have any other operations in the country so, and you can't really move a brewery, you know, making VB anywhere else. So I think we'll continue to see heavy investment in our business in Australia. And what guarantees, if any, can you give to the Fosters workforce about keeping their jobs once and if this takeover happens? Yeah, all I can say is I had a you know, good, very, very personal, warm conversation with Graham Mackay, the CEO of SAB Miller, um, the day before last. And, uh, and he believes, as, in, uh, as I do, in the future of this business and in the people and the importance of this business to Australia. So I believe we have their commitment to do, to do what's right. And so therefore job numbers will stay as they are or do you anticipate some sort of change? Oh, look, there'll always be change with, with an event like this but as far as I'm concerned we've taken a lot of decisions in the last 18 months to improve the effectiveness of the business so we've, you know, I, I would expect we'll have those conversations in the next few months. And what about the top job? What's the future for John Pelleas if the takeover <laughs> happens? <laughs> no, well, my focus has and always, always will be making sure that we set the business up right, that the people are well looked after and that the company has the right kind of future. John Pelleas, good to meet you. Thanks so much. Lovely. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for joining us.